Hey guys, this is Kerry, and in this video, we're going to be coding an escape room app. So two things are going to possibly happen here. One is you look at the clues and you realize, that's Halloween. You press check passcode. And you're not very successful. But if on the other hand, you press Thanksgiving, We've escaped. So this is one of the first times, or maybe the first time that we've encountered a program that can do two different things. So we've got a condition where if something happens, you escape. And if anything else happens, you, uh, you lose, kind of. And this type of programming happens all the time. We're going to be using some conditional statements with if and else. Uh, and I'm going to be showing that in the JavaScript. So let's jump over to our brand new copy of it and see if we can code it from a very introductory stage. So this one doesn't work at all uh, when we try to check passcode. Um, but let's see if we can figure out how to make it work. So I've already given you the JavaScript tags. I've already selected some of the elements on the page, the body, the button, the h1, and the h2. So in order to completely program this, we need to start uh, thinking about what else we need to select. So one thing I can tell I'm going to need to select is I'm going to need to be able to read this passcode out of this text or this uh, password input. So to do that, I'm going to say let password input or passcode input. I'm seeing I'm using that word here, passcode input equal document dot query selector hashtag passcode input. So in addition to having access to the body of the page, the button, the h1, and the h2, we need to also have access to this passcode input box. Now what we need to say is we need to say, um, we need to say when the button is clicked, so that's going to be button.addEventListener, and I'm not using the toolbox today, but you could use the toolbox. The button's going to listen for a click event, and when it's clicked, it's going to run a function. And the function that's run is, uh, let's see. So the first thing that it needs to do is that we currently have access to the input box, which is this whole blue group. We need to actually get the value from that, which would be the passcode itself. And even though these look like dots, it will actually be able to read the passcode. So let me show you an example of that. Um, so we've got passcode input. And then to get the value from that, we from the toolbox, we could use, let's see, I'm just going to bring the toolbox up. From the toolbox, we could use that uh, let variable name equal element dot value that we've been using. And we could say let the passcode be the value from the passcode inputs. Then next up, uh, we could just alert out that passcode to make sure that it's working. So t is t, thanks is thanks. It looks like it's reading it correctly. Now we've reached a point where we want to create a branch in our program. So the way that you create a branch in your program is you use a combination of two statements, which are if and else. And I'm going to be adding these to the toolbox. But the way that if and else statements look is it's if, and then you put a condition in parentheses. And if that condition, when you check it, is a true statement, the Boolean value true, then all the code inside these squiggly parentheses is going to run. If anything else happens, and you don't need to specify a condition for else, because this is like a catch-all case, if anything else happens, then the code in these parentheses will run. And you don't need to always pair an if and an else, but oftentimes when you have an if, you've got something that's going to run if anything else happens. So in this case, what condition are we checking for? Well, we're checking to see if this passcode is equal to Thanksgiving. So check to see, is the passcode equal to Thanksgiving? And I made a really common mistake here, which is uh, this equal sign does not actually check to see if they're the same thing. This equal sign is going to try to assign a value to this variable. The same way that we used it here, it stores a value inside of this code word. Here we're not trying to store a value, we're checking equality. So in JavaScript you use two or three equal signs to do that. Um, I'm sticking with two, uh, although I think actually the preference is usually to use three. So two equal signs. So if the passcode is equal to Thanksgiving, let's start by alerting uh, you win. If the passcode is anything else, alert you lose. So let's put some semicolons on that. Uh, so Thanksgiving, you win. And 
Ah, random text, you lose. All right, cool. So our program, we should celebrate this moment, actually has a branch where if this happens, we get you in, otherwise this happens. And that adds so much more flexibility to the way we've been coding, right? Before, the same thing used to always happen when we click the button, but now it actually does a check. So uh, in reality, to make this more interesting, we had a lot more complicated things going on in the complete version, where things were turning green, inner HTML was changing. So uh, let's see. I've already selected the H1 element, and it looks like what's supposed to happen when we win is the H1 inner HTML is supposed to become we're out. The H2's inner HTML is supposed to become escaped. The body's background, so remember whenever you edit CSS with JavaScript, you go body.style.theProperty. The body's background is supposed to become light green. And I'm missing a bunch of semicolons as per usual. Uh, and then it looks like the button changed color from red to green. So button dot style dot background is equal to light green as well. All right, so save it and let's see if that works. So I'm going to refresh it and then Thanksgiving. And it looks like that matches what we expected. Now in the failing case from before, it looks like the background uh, is supposed to become red. Oop. The background is supposed to become red. Uh, let's make the button back to red as well. So the button's background is supposed to become red. The uh, inner HTML of these two things is going to be a bunch of skulls. So h1 dot inner HTML and inner HTML remember is always the text inside of the element. So in this case, it's going to be equal to a bunch of skull emojis. So you might have to do that a little bit differently, but uh, I've got a program called Rocket that lets me put those emojis in very easily. And then the h2 inner HTML is also supposed to be a bunch of skulls. So let's go back to our new copy and let's test out a wrong password. G, that looks pretty wrong. Uh, I noticed that the button's password passcode is supposed to change to try again. So we'll say uh, button.innerHTML is equal to try again. Save it and refresh it. So then next up, uh, that's just the water cooler in the background. Sorry about the sound. Uh, so then button.innerHTML is try again. So we do H and then it says try again. That looks great. So finishing everything up, we need to add the sound effects. So to add the sound effects, um, I actually didn't even give you the HTML for that. So we have to go out of the JavaScript for a second and go up to the audio area here. And to add sound, remember you add an audio element. So that's what we do. Um, and then next up, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to open this folder. So this folder has got two sounds in it. Uh, right sound and wrong sound. So the way that you add those is you put source equals right sound dot wave and you have to give this an ID so you can play the sound later. So I'm just going to call it right sound and then you're going to have an audio element whose source is equal to wrong sound dot wave and whose ID is equal to wrong sound. Now in order for JavaScript to interact with these, we need to select them. So let's select the audio elements. So let's let write sound equal document dot query selector hashtag write sound uh, semicolon let wrong sound equal document dot query selector hashtag wrong sound semicolon and uh, to play a sound, we go to our toolbox, and it looks like there's two functions for playing an audio element. So I'm going to copy and paste that into the correct code, and I'll pretty paste it, Command-Shift-V, and then pretty paste here, Command-Shift-V. And the sound that we play when we get it right is the right sound, and that should change both of these. And then the sound that we play when we get it wrong is the wrong sound. And the way that I do that multi-selector is I highlight it once and then press Command-D and it highlights the other one, but that's okay. All right, so let's do a final check on it. Uh, so if I put five, 
plays the wrong sound and it looks pretty wrong. And if we put Thanksgiving, we're in. But testing this, I think that the button here shouldn't say try again. Maybe uh, the button's inner HTML, the text inside of the button, should say, uh, you win. And now when we win, sorry to keep testing this, Thanksgiving. Oh, it's kind of hard to spell. Wow. Thanks. I've lost the ability to spell it. Thanks. Giving. Awesome. So one last thing uh, to think about here is, well, we weren't very descript with uh, how we asked for the secret code. It looks like uh, they could type it in with an uppercase or a lowercase. So there is a way to handle that, but maybe we should improve the directions here. Enter the secret code below to escape from the room. Uh, and then we could say hint, the first letter should be capitalized. Wow, capitalized. I can't spell today. Uh, sorry about that. And now we've got some better directions. Uh, and there was another way to handle that, but I think that we've done enough new stuff in this video. So I'll see you guys in class uh, next time we meet. Bye.